So we are loading hogs for harvest today. And in the winter, it's a little trickier for us to get the hogs loaded because the hogs are up on the mountain. And in the summer, that's not a problem. But in the winter, getting a truck and a trailer up that elevation and then back down that elevation loaded with a lot of, a lot of weight from the animals can get a little dicey because of the ice and the snow buildup. So what we prefer to do, instead of loading them up out there on the hill, is we prefer to actually drive them. I mean, like cattle drive, but pig drive. Uh, we'll run them down off the mountain, down in here into the barnyard, and then we'll take them down the asphalt county road to our cattle corrals, and we will load them out of there. So Yeller, <laughs> he really likes to get out. If I just kind of close the gate, but I don't latch it, <clears throat> he knows a gate that's kind of closed shut and not latched shut, and he'll just blow right through it. He doesn't really go far, but he just sees it as like a little victory, you know, when he can get out. Henry's got Donut over there. So Donut's Henry's go to rodeo horse. And I do have the boys switch it up a little bit on, on what horses they're riding, but when they're clicking and riding well together, I usually keep them together because, you know, you don't want to mess with a team that's playing well. And I'm going to grab Sunday. You know, we got a lot of kids around here, a lot of little kids. And so we are really picky about our horses. You hear horror stories of, you know, people falling off horses. <laughs> we want horses that are a little, a little older. Sunday here's 21. He's by far the oldest, but we don't really buy any horse that's under seven. And that's just given time for that horse to grow up and get some maturity under his legs, get some good saddle time. And we're not necessarily training horses here. We kind of like to have horses that are kind of saddle ready, saddle broke. So I feel really good that any of the kids could get on any of the horses and they'd be fine. The ones in this pen are kind of our ones that we're using multiple times in the week, at least three times a week. And then out in pasture, we have the ones that uh, they're either a little bit lame and we're trying to let them heal up or we have one that's bred and so she's pretty pregnant. We don't want to be riding her aggressively right now in these later stages of pregnancy. And so those ones are out to pasture. I don't normally like to tie up the horses to a gate just because it's not a stable surface. But the snow and all the vehicles at the ranch today are taking up all my high salt area so but again this is why you have a nice mature horse so when the gate's clanging around and other animals are on the other side it doesn't phase them much i need brush mine any brushers oh, i got a brush mine okay you can throw throw your pad on yours so we like to give these guys a good brush down it's not as big of an issue in the winter because they don't get as muddy or sweaty even the reason why you brush them is when you put that saddle on them you don't want them to have crusties or dirt or rocks or bird droppings underneath that saddle because then you go and sit on it and it's, you know, rubbing against that a foreign object in there. So we just want a nice clean saddle pad on a nice clean back with no additional friction. Keep these horses uh, from getting saddle sore. And down here, I'll just kind of do it where the cinches are going to go. I don't need to get his whole belly. And a lot of these cinches are just like these ones, just a little single clip, like that. But I like these ones out of the two ones. So you put them in this first one, and you put it here. And you come down, put it through the second hole, and tight as much as you can. Ooh. I'm in this stage of life right now where I would like to ride with the boys when they ride, when they go roping during the week, but the boys are still little, the girls, the little girls want to ride. So I'm just at that stage where I'm still just the guy on the ground, you know, catching horses, saddling horses. Here in a couple of years when they get a little older, and they can kind of do some of that stuff themselves. I'm planning on spending more time in the saddle. All right now I'm getting them going. This halter, normally I would take it off if we were gonna be doing roping, things like that. But the line of work 
today that we're going to be doing is we're going to begin on the horse, off the horse, on the horse, off the horse, opening gates, closing gates. And so it's not good to leave your horse tied up to just his bridle because it's not like a secure way to tie him up. He'll end up just ripping this off his head if he really wants to get out. And so I'm just going to leave his, his halter underneath his bridle. Like I said, I wouldn't do it like in a competition. It's not going to hurt him. It just kind of looks a little funny, but I like it on days like today when I can just tie my horse up. We've been blessed with good horse people here in the valley. I'm not at a place in my horsemanship yet that I can tell a, a great horse from a good horse and sometimes not even a good horse from a bad horse. We've got some good cowboys around us here. Every time I'm looking for a horse and need one, I'll often take that potential horse that's for sale and I'll let my cowboy friends come over. I'll drop it off at my cowboy friend's house for a few days and they'll ride them. Take them up on the mountain, rope calves with them, cross water, uh, ride them near heavy machinery and just kind of see what the horse is all about. Sometimes he comes back and says, this horse is great. I'd get it. Sometimes he come back, comes back and says, don't get it. So we lean a lot on people that know better than us on what horses are good. These were all just horses that we tested out. We do like to bring them home and try them out because horses are larger investments and they're around for a long time. So you're gonna have them for a decade or more. And so just good to really know what you're buying. And like you're high up on the air, hard surfaces down below, you wanna make sure you're safe. Trying to decide if I want to be riding with my cowboy spur boots or just with my muck boots. My muck boots are nice because they're insulated and warm and you get in the snow, you get into the muck of the corral, the mud, the manure, and they're fine that way. But they are like not great for riding. You don't have great, uh, you know, stability. Sometimes you can't, even, they're so wide, it's kind of hard to get out of them. So I'm just gonna leave my muck boots home for now, take my cowboy boots and uh, get through it today. Better safe than sorry. So Henry can do almost everything about getting his horse ready, except for putting his saddle up on the horse and putting his bridle on. But he can take his stuff off. He can obviously catch his horse, put his horse back, do all that. push the pigs down the hill and I'll go down in front of them and block off the little places where the pigs could get away. We made it up to the hog pens up here on the hill. The horses are loving it. They're so happy to be doing something other than just arena work today. So we got going up the hill and they just took off. They like a new change of scenery, uh, nice sunny day like this, good visibility. Everybody's happy. We're gonna go see the pigs right now. Some of them are up higher up on the mountain. So we're gonna go bring them down and get them into the corral. And today we're gonna to be sorting off the biggest ones and then the other ones we'll leave them until next time. So the name of the game today is just finding those, those ones that are basically the biggest that we will take the harvest. So behind me we have the loadout corral. Under normal conditions, we would just bring the truck and the trailer right up to here and put the pigs on the trailer and, and drive out. But because of the conditions and the ice and the snow and the steepness of the road, we're going to run them down the road instead. Now that's why we're doing all that excavation work out there is we're trying to lessen the, the steepness of the grade of the road so that even on a day like today, middle of winter, lots of snow, lots of ice, it's safe enough that we could load out pigs up here anytime we want. The pigs up on the mountain, they have access here in this lower area where they're eating, they're drinking, they're sleeping. Over here we have a gate that we can open and close and allow them to go way up on the mountain there where they like to roam around and run and play hide and seek and whatever they do. You can see there, it's cold outside. It's probably, I don't know, five degrees Fahrenheit right now. The pigs are active, they're healthy, they're excited. They love winter. 
I mean, there's really no other time they love more than Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day. This is their favorite time of the year. Just laying out in the snow on a starry night. That's like being on a beach for these guys. In the summer, we have to take a little closer look at them because of the heat. They get sunburnt quite easily. They have to be cooled off because they can't sweat by themselves. So we have to provide either mud or misters or a way to keep them nice and cool. But the winter, we just provide them with plenty of straw to bed in, plenty of alfalfa to nibble on, lots of grains to eat, nice clean, fresh water, and they're happy as can be, like pigs in snow. So this alfalfa bale right here, we've got two types of bales here. This one closest to us is a wheat straw bale. So that's what they make after they harvest off the wheat heads, the, the grain of the wheat. Then it's just the stock that's left, and that will be baled into these bales, and then farmers ranchers like us will use these to bed their animals in. It makes for great bedding. It's also a low nutritious food, but a nice supplemental food for them as well. The bale behind them is a alfalfa bale, just like we feed to the cattle, and it's very high in protein, and the pigs love eating it. It's basically grass with high protein. I've noticed that if we give them that free choice as much as they want, it'll actually lower our grain uh, bill by 30% by them just eating those grasses. So they like variety in their diet. The same goes in the summer when they're eating uh, plants and, and grasses and pasture and things like that. Now I think it's time to get the muck boots on. We snuck them up here. Hello, little pigs. Hello, little pigs. <laughs> <laughs> 